Hello everyone, and welcome back to our learning series on ECDIS, the Electronic Chart Display and Information System. As I mentioned earlier, ECDIS is a vast subject. To make it easier to understand, we've divided it into three videos. In the first video, we introduce the basics of ECDIS. If you haven't seen the first video, make sure to check it out. Now, in this second video, we'll dive deeper into important topics like safety settings, scamming, WGS84, CCRP, CATSOC, and carriage requirements. And finally, in the third video, we'll bring everything together with a detailed look at passage planning in ECDIS. So without wasting time, let's get started. Let's start with ECDIS safety settings. These include the safety contour, shallow contour, deep contour, safety depth, look ahead, vector area, and sector area. The safety contour is the critical boundary between safe and unsafe waters. It is calculated using the ship's draft, squat, underkeel clearance, and tidal height. On the chart, safe water is shown light gray or white, and unsafe water appears light blue. Formula. Draft plus squat plus UKC minus height of tide. The shallow contour indicates depths at or below which grounding is possible. It is normally set to draft plus maximum squat. On the chart, the area shaded dark blue is considered a no-go area. The deep contour marks the boundary of deeper and safer waters. It is usually set as twice the ship's draft, or sometimes 200 meters for ballast water exchange. It is the line where the ship could be affected by squat. The calculation is deep water contour equals draft plus max squat times two. The safety depth setting indicates the minimum safe water depth for the vessel, calculated similarly to the safety contour by adding draft, squat, UKC, and subtracting tide height. It helps highlight unsafe spot soundings and reinforces the safety contour. Deep water is shown in gray, lesser depths in black. Now let's see look ahead setting. The look ahead function projects the ship's future position, considering course, speed, and safety settings. If any danger lies within that zone, the system gives an alarm or warning. Its purpose is simple, to provide an early warning system. The vector area looks like a rectangular corridor projected along the ship's track. Its width is based on beam plus cross-track limit, and its length is based on look ahead, time or distance. Think of it as a safety tunnel directly ahead of the vessel. The sector area is a fan-shaped zone projected ahead. It covers both the ship's track and slightly off-track areas. This makes it very useful in pilotage, maneuvering, and coastal navigation. Note that vector area is used in narrow corridor for precise route monitoring, anti-grounding along track, and sector area is used for wide fan for general danger detection ahead of ship. Scammon or scale minimum defines the smallest scale at which a feature will still be displayed. If you zoom out too far, minor features disappear. Purpose of scammon is to prevent overcrowding slash clutter on the display when zoomed out. Ensures only relevant features are shown at each scale. Makes chart display clearer and easier to interpret. Impotent point. During passage planning, scamming should generally be turned off or set so that no important objects are missed, meaning all features are visible regardless of zoom level. During active navigation, scamming can be turned on to prevent the screen from becoming overcrowded with many small details, helping navigators focus on relevant information. Now let's see what is WGS-84. WGS-84 is the World Geodetic System 1984. It is the global reference system for latitude, longitude, and altitude, and it is also the standard used by GPS. It is important because all electronic navigational charts, ENCs, are compiled on WGS-84, which ensures that accuracy is maintained. If a chart is not based on WGS-84, a datum shift may occur, causing position errors. Next topic is CCRP, or Consistent Common Reference Point. It is a fixed location on the ship. All navigational sensors, G, P, S, radar, A, I, S, are aligned to this point. This ensures that all data matches correctly on the ECDES display. Now let's see what is CATSOC. CATSOC stands for Category Zone of Confidence. 
Katzok in Ekdis is a quality indicator that tells mariners how accurate and reliable the charted depth and position data are for specific areas on electronic navigational charts ENCs. Katzok values represent the minimum standards met for position accuracy, depth accuracy, and seafloor coverage. These values are displayed in Ectis using symbols, typically triangular or diamond-shaped icons with stars. The number of stars shows the confidence level. Six stars, A1, is the highest accuracy, two stars, D, is the lowest, and U stands for unassessed areas. Presented below is the complete Katzok chart, detailing star classifications along with information on position accuracy, depth accuracy, seabed coverage, and their corresponding meanings. You may pause or capture a screenshot for reference. Finally, let us look at the carriage requirements for ECTIS according to IMO Resolution MSC 282, open parenthesis 86, close parenthesis. For passenger ships of 500 gross tonnage and above, ECTIS has been mandatory since 2012. For tankers of 3,000 gross tonnage and above, it has also been mandatory since 2012. For cargo ships, those of 10,000 gross tonnage and above, built after July 2013, must be fitted with ECTIS. Those of 20,000 gross tonnage and above, built after July 2012, must be fitted with ECTIS. Existing cargo ships of 50,000 gross tonnage and above were required to comply by 2017. And finally, remember that all ships built after 1st July 2012 must be equipped with ECDS. And that brings us to the end of this second part of our ECD series. Today, we explored some very important topics from safety settings, look ahead functions, vector and sector areas, Scammon, WGS84, CCRP, CATSOC, all the way to the carriage requirements of ECDIS. In the next and final video, we'll put this knowledge into action and learn about one of the most important applications of ECDIS, passage planning. I'll take you step by step through how ECDIS is used to plan and execute a safe voyage. And if you have any questions or doubts, drop them in the comments section below. I'll be happy to answer and discuss them with you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video share it with your friends, and subscribe so you don't miss the next part. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next session.